Hey, it's Joe with Jolie Farms. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a chip on my shoulder. I want to talk to you about that. Coming right up. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we want to talk to you about that chip on my shoulder. It's not really a chip, but it's something that I noticed about YouTubers who come here to Vilcabamba. We love it when YouTubers come here because we love the promotion of Vilcabamba. However, we think that in a couple of hours of visiting Vilcabamba, you can't really get the feel for it, and sometimes um, the criticisms are unwarranted. Yeah, the big city life is going to be a lot different than living in a smaller town. And when you walk through town and you just look for big city activities, you're not going to find them here. But there's tons of activities hidden all over the place in Vilcabamba. Yeah, and you know, we've started doing videos in the last four months or so, so we're not YouTube experts by any means. Um, you've seen our videos and you know we're a little raw. Um, but we have lived here now five years, so we think that we have a little credibility in understanding the community. Um, maybe not as much as some who've lived here 15 years or more, mm -hmm. but we're at a point now where we've experienced a lot of the things we're going to talk to you today. And my, my pet peeve is the video that talked about there's nothing to do in Vilcabamba, and that's just patently false. Um, if you're looking for five-star hotels and five-star shopping, then maybe you need to go to a big city. But there's a lot to do here in Vilcabamba, and we're going to go down a list here. And we're going to talk to you about those things. Definitely. Dominoes is uh, a big one here. Yeah, we got a group of people that play dominoes, men and women. And, uh, you know, they meet in Friday afternoons at uh, 2 o'clock. And they play 42 and other domino games. And they're always looking for new players. And they're perfectly willing to train us neophytes uh, in dominoes. So, yeah, that's a great group to belong to. You know, some of them will go and have a late lunch and then play the dominoes. So it's a really great social group, a lot of fun. And if dominoes aren't up your alley, maybe you want to play cards and have a bridge club. Yeah, there's a bridge club here. You know, our friend Kasha Matlag, uh, who did the interview about healthcare here in Ecuador, um, she is belongs to the bridge club. And so they all get together and play bridge and have a great time with it. And horseback riding is just Wonderful to see all over town. You see them walking their horses through town and before they go on their tours. Yeah, you'll you'll see them sometimes hitched up to a stop sign right outside a restaurant. Yeah. It's that part of that great small town atmosphere. There's three or four uh, horseback riding outfitters here. So there's plenty to choose from and uh, they'll take you to horseback riding to the waterfalls or shorter rides if you want. That's kind of an almost an all day ride or a five hour ride. But there's shorter rides if that's what you want. Um, we have individuals that we know that go riding every week. And then we have uh, people we know who actually own their own horses. And then there's um, bike riding. You can do bike riding tours. Yeah, our friend Carl, he takes um, kids on Saturdays and they have a big group of kids. And they go on a tour all taking their bikes. And Chino's Bike Shop rents mountain bikes, etc., and so a lot of people come to Vilcabamba and rent bikes and go on these big bike riding tours. And yeah, it's wonderful to see the kids going on the tours, and it's great family fun to uh, chase your kid on a bike. But I think they also have uh, extreme mountain biking tours as well. They do, and there's a lot of biking clubs, you know, uh, here in the Loja province. So mm -hmm. a lot of fun there. And after bike riding and getting all nice and hot, you can go swimming. A lot of great places to swim here. So you can go swim in the river if that's what you want to do. Take a dip there. A lot of secret swimming holes around the area. And there are also um, some great swimming pools in this area. So um, depending on where you are, where you're staying, you know, if you're staying at Escaluma, man, they got a wonderful pool there. Um, of course, Descanso del Toro has two pools. And a place called Piedra Dura, we really like it. It has a great big swimming pool, has... Uh, a hot tub, and they've got saunas, all of that. And I think that's like $7 a day to go use that all day long. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of great places. The pool at Piedra Dura is more like a lap pool, so you can really get in some serious swimming there. 
Well, I think they have the swing, too, that swings out over the mountain. It's That's really true. Cool. Yeah, big swing. We're going to do a complete tour of Piedra Dura coming up. Um, we'll uh, get that video to you as soon as we can. And to take the kids out, there's always the zoo. Yeah, we have a zoo here in Vilcabamba. Now, it's not, you know, the San Diego Zoo by any means, but um, it certainly is a nice zoo with a nice little park and picnic tables and playground area. And uh, there's also a bigger zoo in Loja. Um, so we're going to be doing a tour of that zoo, uh, both the Vilcabamba Zoo and the Loja Zoo, and we'll have those on a future video. And the hiking group. Man, there's several hiking groups here in Bilcabamba. There are. Our friend Kasha Matlog, she does a Tuesday group, and they all hike. And sometimes the hikes are pretty rigorous, you know, eight, nine miles. Uh, sometimes they're less. But they always go to some beautiful places, and they always post beautiful pictures of mm -hmm. some of the places they go. You'll see some of those pictures right here. Yeah, there's a lot of hiking groups. You can just pick which ones you fit into the best. Um also, beyond hiking, is archery. Yeah, the archery group. Man, those guys uh, give archery lessons and um, every week, and so that you've got a pretty good following with that going right now. I've not personally been, but I have friends who go. And the big thing in, in Vilcabamba, I'm going to have to say, is yoga. There's a lot of yoga. Yeah, however you like your yoga, you can get it here. <laughs> um, there's so many yoga groups. Vilcabamba has a wonderful... Um, uh, following of yoga uh, practitioners mm -hmm. and instructors. And up at Ish Ishkaluma uh, Hosteria, they have a wonderful yoga chalet up there. If you're staying there, I understand the yoga lessons are free. Um, but if you're just a guest, there's a small fee for doing that. Um, we also have my friend Reed, um, who has uh, Casa de las Artes, uh, which is a brand new uh, place he's opened up. And it's dedicated to the arts. They have yoga lessons there several times a week. They have your favorite, Qigong. Qigong and salsa dancing. And all they do sorts of all activities. All sorts of things. Yeah, I post a picture of that here. So yoga's big. Um, there's the Pyramid, um, which is a place where people go to to do yoga here in Vilcabamba. And they also have other types of activities there. Mm-hmm. And art. Art is big. There's a lot of creative people here. A lot of creative people here, and they do have art contests from time to time. Um, so uh, you'll see that. Again, Reed at Casa de los Artists um, had a big art show here recently, and mm -hmm. a lot of cool, cool artists displayed there. A lot of great art here. Art and pottery. There's a lot of pottery as well. Yeah, Lisa does pottery. I'll we'll have some of her pictures posted here of her work. And there's several places to do pottery here. Uh, Maya Choi uh, has a restaurant up in San Pedro, but she also gives pottery classes there. She has her kiln there, and so uh, a lot of people go up there and take pottery classes from Maya. Mm -hmm. And there's a brand new one right here in town that does pottery. You'll see the picture here, pottery workshops. So there's a lot of that. If that's your thing or you want to learn it, this is the place to do it, man. And there's also parties. There's uh, personal parties, big parties, festivals. Yeah, so Carnival, of course, is the biggest party of all here every February. And there'll be, uh, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000 people flood into this town. Yeah. Lots of live music during that uh, event. Of course, there's always live music in Vilcabamba, but um, there's a lot of musicians here. Mm -hmm. But you'll see at Carnival, man, they just, water gets thrown, super soakers, uh, silly string, shaving cream, uh, shaving cream, you name it. So you don't want to go downtown Vilcabamba if you don't want to get wet. Wear your old clothes, they say. Um, if you're downtown, you're part of the party, uh, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> it is, and it's really nice because all the little kids get out, and they're somewhat respectful, but if you act like you're willing to get soaked at all, they're going to help you out with it. They definitely are. So the other kind of parties, I mean, like we have Thanksgiving come up uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. and so there'll, we'll have a big group, 30, 40 people. And uh, there'll also be a big Thanksgiving dinner in the park in Vilcabamba for people who are less fortunate. And so they'll serve about 1,000 meals there on Thursday. So it's really great, run by volunteers and donations. And um, we always have you know little parties and things up here at our house. We've done Thanksgiving here, and we've had 30-plus people here at our house. And so there's no lack of parties, just depends on where you want to go, 
Um, we stay pretty busy just attending birthday parties. That's true. We did have a, a year that I think every couple of weeks to a month, there was a gathering for a birthday. You know, whatever reason you have to gather, people will gather and celebrate. And uh, one of my favorites is the symphony. Uh, my friend Jose Pablo does a very good job at trying to promote the symphony and music here in Vilcabamba. In Loja, there's a huge full symphony, and you can always participate in that. But what they do is they'll bring smaller aspects of the symphony here to Vilcabamba. We have some great places. We have a technological institute that has two wonderful auditoriums with stages. And so sometimes the symphony is there. Sometimes it's in Central Park right in front of the church. Mm. Um, and it's usually either no cost or low cost to the community. Sometimes they ask for donations to help pay for the musician's uh, meal. And uh, so it's, it's a wonderful thing for the community, I think. Um, we have several friends who participate in that symphony as well. There are some very talented people here. Very talented. Yeah. We mentioned uh, Carnival, but there's lots of festivals here. You name it, there's a festival for everything. Of course, we have all the Catholic religious holiday festivals here, which usually almost once a month or something. Um, we have a Christmas parade. In addition to the Christmas parade, we just had the um, Loja Independence Day parade. And so uh, a lot of the the school kids are involved in that parade. It's a very, very big deal for them. So there's always a parade. There's always a festival. There's arts and craft shows here. Um, they're kind of ongoing. We just had some of those through town. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also a, um, a great thing that happens here where a lot of Peruvian food is um, displayed and, and sold. And they meet in the, the square in Vilcabamba. And so they have all this food you can come and taste and it really gives you a good flavor for Peru. Yeah, it's uh, it's really nice to be able to get the different types of foods and to watch the different uh, parades. And the parades are very family oriented. They have all the children are involved in the parades, and um, from the youngest to the oldest, it's just it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to watch. And speaking of oldest, we have the men's group. The oldest men's group. <laughs> <laughs> we, we meet on Wednesday for lunch, and uh, I got involved with this um, maybe about eight months after coming to Vilcabamba. Mm -hmm. And these guys all um, are just a great group of guys, different backgrounds, different belief systems, etc. But we meet once a week for lunch, and those guys really helped me uh, learn about Vilcabamba, get a flavor for it really quickly. Uh, they also meet on Sundays. They meet starting at breakfast, and uh, they kind of just eat all day long eat on Sunday. all day, yeah. Yeah, they go and they have lunch, or they follow up with dessert after that. And sometimes they, they do a little walk in there, too, so they get a little exercise. But great group of guys, and uh, if you're interested in being a part of that, reach out to me, and we'll get you plugged in there. And then there's the gardening clubs and the homestead group. Yeah, the gardening club. There's a gardening club here in Bilcabamba. I don't know much about it, even though we're gardeners. Um, but we started a homestead group ourselves, and we meet um, every other Monday. Uh, we're meeting tomorrow. And so uh, we teach things like food preservation, um, gardening, you know, best practices, permaculture, et cetera. And we teach a lot of different things in those homestead groups. And some of these are skills that have been lost over the years that we want to reinvigorate and bring back. And so that's been pretty good, pretty good attendance, 20 to 30 people every time. And mm -hmm. so um, we have different presenters each, every two weeks. So you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to other people. And we try to share our experiences um, and share our production together as well. Definitely, definitely. And for the younger kids, there's a library club. club. Yeah, the library club's a cool thing for after school for the kids. They meet in this one building. And they have activities, they have library books they can check out. They get read to as well. They read stories together. And a lot of the uh, expats volunteer. There's a, a tent that they have at the uh, Saturday Mercado. And so uh, they raise money at that tent for this event, for the mm -hmm. library club. And so my friend Yandre is always there. He's a local guy that has a passion to helping the kids. And so you see several gringos in there helping. That's a, a great opportunity to volunteer, especially if you're bilingual. Yes, definitely. Um, animal rescue groups. 
Yeah, uh, a Yudas de Mascadas, the help for the mascots, is a great group. They raise money every year and they spay and neuter dogs and cats and try to keep the population down here in Vilcabamba a little bit. So it's a great group and they usually do, I don't know, 30, 40 dogs every year. Um, so kudos to them. That's a great place you could volunteer at here. Yeah, speaking of volunteer, there's the hospice volunteers. Yeah, our friend Carol, um, there's there's no, let me be clear, there's no hospice here in Ecuador. Um, that's something that's not part of this culture. They believe in extending life to the last possible second and spending as much money as they can to do so. So uh, Carol saw a need for uh, people who were end of life and wanted to uh, kind of, you know, bring that to a close with a little dignity. She has a passion for that. Um, she needs more volunteers. We need people who are skilled and uh, people who have a passion for helping people at end of life. So Carol has a wonderful website. I'll try to post that into the comments. And uh, that's a great place to volunteer. She has a lot of information on her website that you need to know about Ecuador and what it pertains to in dying here in Ecuador. Definitely a wealth of information. Um, we also have martial arts groups. Yeah, there's uh, several guys that offer that here. And uh, Steve Gray, a guy I know does some martial arts, and he's always got an advertisement going on for different types of martial arts. So that's something that's available to you. Great for the body, great for the mind. Mm -hmm. Good deal. And then, of course, we have the basketball groups. Yeah, we got a lot of guys who play basketball here. And, I mean, guys from their 20-somethings up into their 50s. And, uh, you know, they're always uh, uh, having a great time with that. They're good. There is a few injuries from time to time. So they're always looking for new players. Yeah. And they have ultimate Frisbee also. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. You see that in the park over by the uh, Coliseum. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ultimate Frisbee. And after you finish with all that, you need a massage. <laughs> yes. Massage those sore muscles from basketball. So uh, there's every type of massage here. Swedish massage, Thai massage. There's massage therapies of different types. Um, so you name it, there's a dozen people in town that do that. Definitely. And canine training. That's something uh, relatively new to Vilcabamba. I don't know much about the local canine trainers here. Um, I do know in Loja there's been a great group of German Shepherd trainers there for a number of years. But this is something new here to Vilcabamba. We hope we can get back to you with more information about that. And we have the Bikes for Kids, which kind of goes along with the uh, bike riding clubs, but also live music. We have live music everywhere. You name it. I mean, um, there's street musicians, of course, that come in all the restaurants, um, but there's actual paid live performers who come in different restaurants, and we have in the park live music. Continuously, it seems like. Dining. We have lots of dining opportunities. How many restaurants did you say we have? Well, I counted just in Vilcabamba proper over 60 restaurants. You can definitely eat your way through town. There's new restaurants coming in all the time. Um, we have a new uh, Pakistani restaurant opening right now. We have a new sushi restaurant. Uh, of course, the Indian restaurant opened several months back. Mm -hmm. There's always something new here in terms of eating. Lots of variety. Um, the live theater, theatrical productions. Yeah, live, L-I-V-E, live the theatrical productions. And yeah, now I'm getting tongue-tied. So uh, this is a great group of people. They write their own scripts. They do all their own props, their own costumes. And there's many ways to volunteer and be involved in that. If you don't feel like you have the gift for acting, um, there's certainly you know, people that need help producing props, etc. And so uh, that they're about to do a new production. It's going to be crazy. It's the Hitchhiker's Guide to Vilcabamba. Always fun to watch, always. They're hilarious. Very we went funny. to one that was called the Conspiracy Cafe. Uh, and, that's my uh, favorite. We had a ball with that. <clears throat> There's new first aid classes. Yeah, again, don't know much about that yet. I saw it advertised on Vilca People, the Facebook group. And so that's a great thing. Yes, every hiker group should have a first aid group member. Um, we also have salsa dancing classes. There's been some salsa dancing classes. I think they're on hold right now, but um, it'll come back as soon as we have more demand. And Bible study. There's lots of Bible, lots of churches, but most of them are predominantly Spanish. But we have lots of Bible studies to fill in the gaps. 
Yeah, and you know, there's English speaking Bible studies, and there's the young married couples groups, and you know, older people's Bible studies. So there's a good variety and a good variety of belief systems here, I think. Um, so whatever your belief system is, I think you can be accommodated. I think so. And you can always go to the coffee shop and listen to conspiracy theories. Yeah, you get all the latest conspiracy theories here. Bring your tinfoil hat and uh, you'll fit right in, I promise. I think we have them all. My friend Jose Pablo uh, puts on a health festival at his finca. And that's a, a all weekend long type of thing. So health practitioners, people who sell healthcare products, all of that comes together in one place. And it's a wealth of information. They have some classes that go on there. And so a lot of education. And I think that that's a wonderful opportunity to be involved in that. And whether you want to uh, be a presenter or you just want to be a, a uh, uh, just participate in it, um, either way, I think that's a great opportunity. So we've been to this list of over 36 things that you can do in Vilcabamba. And I promise you that is not all. Because as soon as we produce this video and release it, there's going to be at least five to ten of my friends tap me on the shoulder and they're going to say, why didn't you mention this? <laughs> um, so there may be a follow-up to this video. We may have to do a part two. Uh, but, you know, the idea that there's nothing to do in Vilcabamba is ridiculous. Um, there's lots of things to do here. Not all of this uh, may appeal to you, but there's certainly going to be something in this. And there's certainly you're going to find other people who have the same interest you do. And it'll be easy for you to start your own group um, of whatever it is that you're passionate about. So come be a part of this. And uh, if you already live here and you, you don't know about some of these things and you have questions about it, contact me. I don't know at all, but I'm going to put you in contact with people who do. Definitely. So come to Vilcabamba and have a ball. Thank you for subscribing. We hope that you'll give us a thumbs up on this video. God bless.